hi there, Sam. Sorry for the unprompted call, but I came to our usual spot and you just weren't there. Oh, I'm in here today. Okay. Well, if you can hear me well enough, do you mind if I ask my first question? Sure. So, I'm out here enjoying my meadow, and the first year of growth has been pretty good, aside from a few bare patches, but I was wondering, what can I do to make my meadow more presentable to other people, like my neighbors, in the second year of growth and beyond? Well, I can certainly help with that, and to do so, I've created this artist rendition of your meadow from a top-down perspective with some bare patches. And one of the things you can do with bear patches is allow them to guide where you might want a path through your meadow. That can make it a very attractive landscape feature for your neighbors. So maybe you just take a path from the side of your lawn here, coming in this way to connect this large bear patch to this smaller one in a really cool winding fashion. And now you can walk through these plants. Oh, I missed one. And that's a beautiful path. Now, of course, you might want to repair these bear patches. We've talked before about using seed, and you can, in this larger patch where there's a lot more ground to cover, sprinkle more of your meadow seeds in, and the following year you will start to see your meadow begin to fill in with more plants. Another way you can do this is by planting live plants, or we call them plugs, and this way you can plant them exactly where you want them to create a really cool feature. Maybe, I know you like Blazing Star, we put a bunch of them in this smaller bear patch here, and this really looks like it could be a great landscape feature, like a picnic table maybe. How about that? And these are just some of the ways you can take advantage of bear patches, but I want to tell you, although you might want to repair them if they're large or unsightly, bear patches are really important for a lot of wildlife, especially insects. Many bees, bumblebees, and others nest underground, and they need that bare soil to be able to create those nests. So, not the end of the world. Um, I hope this helps you with some ideas to make your meadow look nice for your neighbors. Well, that sounds excellent. I would love to have easier access to my meadow instead of just enjoying it from the edge like I have been for the past year. I did want to bring up that I've seen a few saplings coming up along the edge of my meadow. Is that something I need to be concerned about? Yeah, you don't want woody plants getting into your meadow, especially trees. And to help illustrate why, I've created this handy diagram here that shows your meadow at different stages through time. And here's probably the situation you're dealing with now, a small sapling tree that you just noticed, right? It was probably difficult to see and you came upon it. Now, if you let this tree grow, what happens is it will begin to shade out the meadow plants beneath it, those plants that need full sun. And I hope you don't let your tree get to this stage where it's 50 years old, but certainly then that will be a problem. So what we recommend is to periodically cut these plants out of your meadow. Winter is my favorite time to do this because saplings like this are easiest to see. All the meadow plants are kind of laying down dormant for the winter. So I'm just going to take my handy pruners here and uh, clip this little tree, remove it, and you will see that very quickly the meadow vegetation fills back in. Now if you let your tree get to this stage, that's not ideal, but certainly I would still recommend cutting it with my chainsaw here. Larger one as well. And that will allow more light to get to your meadow plants. So this is why it is very important to keep woody plants from establishing in your meadow. That sounds easy enough to do. Should I worry about these woody species affecting the mowing of my entire meadow? Well, you really don't want to let these woody species get large enough where you're going to hurt your mower by rolling over them. I would get a pair of pruners, or if they're really big woody things, maybe a pair of loppers, and just take them out that way. It shouldn't be too much trouble for you. Ah, okay, thank you, Sam. I appreciate that. On the topic of mowing, I know we talked a little bit last time about when to mow my meadow, but I was wondering, if I'm gone during the time that I normally would cut my meadow, or if the weather is particularly bad one season, is that something I need to be concerned about? What if I have to cut my meadow at a different time? Yeah, this can be a problem. 
Ecologically, I would say the best time to cut a meadow is late winter to early spring. And that's because all of these little beneficial insects that you've designed your meadow to support can get out of the way and you're not destroying all of their winter habitat. But this is tricky. Late winter, early spring is a very wet time, often tough to get a mower on the ground. And if you have to mow your meadow at different times of the year, I recommend mowing just portions of it at a time. So here's your meadow again, and I'll get my lawn mower out. So one year we might mow a third of it, and this leaves the rest of the meadow for things to live in. And each year you just mow a different portion of it, so you're not taking away all of that habitat at one time. Now, there are many ways to manage a meadow after it's been established. I'm a prescribed fire manager and I burn meadows. Lily, probably not something you could do in your suburban meadow. And for many people who want to make meadows, burning is probably off the table. And this is why we recommend cutting as the long-term management tactic for maintaining these plant communities. Unfortunately, I'm just restricted to mowing because I live in a neighborhood, but I always love hearing what other possibilities are out there. Before I hang up, do you have any other suggestions for things I need to do with continued maintenance of my meadow? Uh, well, you know, don't forget to get out and smell the flowers. Excellent. Thank you so much, Sam, and I'll see you next time.